Hi, I'm Ronald from uh, brewery De Dochter van de Korenaar in Baarle Hertog, a little enclave, Belgian enclave, located in Holland. So a bit weird combination. Uh, I'm a Dutchman making Belgian beer with French names. Welcome here at the uh, brewery Dr. van der Korenaar. Uh, actually, we're in the brew house at the moment. Brew house and fermentation is over there. So this is the boiler and back there, I'll show you later, we have the filtration uh, vessel. Okay, the ma ma mashing. Mash, mash mashing. Done. yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, the heat exchanger, uh, the hot water tank, and uh, malt storage is over there, where the malt is uh, grinded and driven up to the mash tun, mixed with hot water. So brewing takes part over here, fermentation is over there, malt storage back there, and then uh, in the next room, we have the bottling facility. Uh, at the moment, we're bottling a starter. Uh, and then behind that is the warm storage so for re fermentation. Every beer is re, re fermented in the bottle. And then it goes to the right to the cold storage. And from there to about 27 or 28 countries worldwide. And then it goes out. So we've got a perfect. Uh, U-turn uh, for uh, raw materials coming in and finished product going out at the other side, all in front. A uh, nice terrace in the summer, so tasting room is next door. The brew house is 50 hectoliters, so I can brew 50 hectoliters or 5,000 liters at the same time. Uh, if I need to, I can do it uh, twice a day. But the fermentation capacity at the moment is uh, lower. So if I want to do like 10,000 hectoliters a year, then I have to add some more fermentation tanks. But we have room, so that's possible. Maximum capacity is depending on turnover speed. So I guess about 10, maybe 13,000 uh, hectoliters. I bought this building, it was only this, this old farmhouse building uh, now it's not not old, old anymore we uh, renovated it but uh, um, so the, the area back there was outdoor and one of my big hobbies is uh, aging beer on oak barrels so I had the opportunity to dig a large cellar and for the the kind of beers that I age on wooden barrels, it's necessary, necess necessary that uh, uh, the temperature is reasonable const constant. So it, it, it ages at between 13 and 15 degrees uh, for about one and a half to two years. Now we're in the cellar and uh, the barrel I was talking about is that one. Now it's filled again, uh, not, with, not with the same beer, or at least not with beer, uh, because it's 20% of alcohol that's in there now. But it used to be a Merceau barrel, a white burgundy barrel, 600 liters. And I aged um, English, uh, traditional English IPA uh, for 26 months and then dry hopped it with uh, just a little bit Nelson Sauvin and uh, lots of East Camp Goldings. So it's very classic, but because of the aging and the mix, mixing with the white burgundy, you get this creamy wine flavor, bitterness from the beer. It's, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's almost, almost a perfect beer. And Especially together with oysters. Yes. What is, uh, how did you conceive of it? And how do you conceive of your beers generally? Because you come up with some very creative ideas, you experiment. Yeah, but what, half, a uh, quarter or half of your production is barrel aged? No, 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 no. Uh, oh, maybe 5%. 5%. Yeah, just, just a little bit. At the moment, I think there are about 370 barrels in our cellar. Uh, 
varying from white wine, white wine barrels, Geneva barrels, whiskey barrels, uh, red wine barrels, and also some new oak. Uh, it's more, more, more or less uh, experimental because aging on on new oak. Uh, I don't believe many brewers do it because it's expensive. It's not so easy, uh, but you. If you, do it right, young wood, if you do it right, you get amazing beers. I started brewing when I was 15, but barrel aging beer, I started uh, at the Doctor van der Korna, which I started in 2007. Uh, I think two years later, I started with whiskey barrels. And whiskey barrels is fairly easy because it's strong liquor, the barrels are sterile, and uh, you don't have to worry about cleaning and sanitizing them. Uh, so you just, if, if they're fresh, you put your beer in. Uh, and the only thing you have to worry about is, does the beer match with the liquor that has been in there before? Depending on the type of barrel, uh, it's a repeated whiskey barrel, or a normal uh, Speyside or Highland whiskey barrel, or Geneva or Cognac. Uh, it's all depending what kind of beer you put on it. And what kind of beers do you like making? Uh, What's your style? Do you have a style or is it just the things that you like doing I like, that you've been doing? Yeah, I, li I like trying a lot of styles, but I guess uh, the best that I do is making quite hoppy beers. And in my hop storage, I have about 40 varieties of hops, which I use for, I think at the moment we have together with all the specials, 18 different beers. Um, and I like mixing varieties of hops in, for instance, IPAs or hoppy ales. And then I can use up to, well, Extasa has 14 different varieties of hops in it. And when the beer, when you, when you drink the beer, when it's warming up slowly, you get different flavors every time because at different temperatures uh, you have different hop flavors and that's fun and you get a nice beer. You said you're uh, from the Netherlands, living in Belgium and yeah. naming your beer is in French. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that part of your ethics, culture, you love that kind of multiculturalism or is it because you're a gourmet also and you love the... Uh, no, it's, 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 it's part because uh, when we started this brewery, uh, the, the finance came from France. We had a holiday house over there, which I renovated in uh, seven years. And I don't want it anything to do with financial things like banks. Um, I had some bad experience in the past. Uh, so we wanted to finance, finance the brewery ourselves, so we sold the house in France and uh, from that money we were able to start the first location, the first brewery, which was nothing more than a very small house brewery, only 1,000 liter batches. I think the square footage was uh, 130 square meters. I think at the moment uh, we are just with too many brewers and uh, especially the, the, the method of uh, financing many of these breweries uh, they wouldn't be there uh, with normal finance uh, methods but with crowdfunding almost any, anybody with about 50 to 100 friends who are willing to pay 200 or 300 euros uh, can invest in a small brewery and start a brewery which is sort of riskless money uh, nobody will ever go for bankruptcy for two or three hundred euros so people do all kind of crazy stuff and uh, we're just with too many breweries it's like having one shark in a, in a pond of a thousand fishes which is okay but put in ten sharks and the fishes will disappear and the sharks will die. That's what's going on, on now on the market. 
And, uh, and you're saying there's also a lot of beers where not a lot of care or thought has been. People are just going well, for marketing. Uh, you have this this uh, this thing that that many beer people, beer geeks, beer drinkers, beer lovers, whatever, uh, they all every day want to to try something new, which in itself is okay, but if it results in what's going on on now, that uh, for instance a bar with a with a tap list or a bottle list, they will never put a beer on uh, for, for several months. It's always changing because people always want to drink something new. There are even brewers who don't make the same beer twice. And I'm not convinced that any brewer can make a perfect beer every time. Beers needs to be fine-tuned. Often it takes five or, or sometimes even 50 brews before you have a beer really spot on. You can't do it in one time, at least not every time. If you're lucky you can do it maybe once or twice or three times, but not every time. So you get a crappy beer on the market now and then. I assume you throw away a lot of beer. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not sometimes, anymore. Of course, <laughs> barrel aging is always a risk. Yeah. And sometimes maybe 1% of what we do is infected and you have to throw it away. Loss. No. 1% is acceptable. And you've really uh, started something uh, yesterday, I think you published something about ah, you want to go yeah. the opposite of crowdfunding and you want yeah. to fund the crowd. Yep. What's that all about? It's, it's, it's an action uh, that we started um, to, to well, maybe have the same advantages as with crowdfunding, namely that you uh, have a certain amount of people uh, in your, in your uh, area that are interested in your brewery, in your beers, and uh, we don't want their money, but we want their attention. And uh, for that attention, we are willing to pay them, or at least give them some advantages when they come to the uh, brew pub. They get, for instance, the first beer is on us. Uh, if they buy beers to, for takeaway in the bubble shop, they get a discount. And uh, every year at our birthday party, uh, they are invited and we have a barbecue party, some nice beers, and we will talk about uh, the past, present, and future of the brewery together with them. And if there are any nice ideas, they can just talk with us, and, and uh, maybe if they're good, we can use them. And uh, I'm also willing to, to well, we can't do it with, with 50 or 100 people, but maybe 15 every year uh, that come over to the brewery and uh, work with me on the brewing day. So they can learn everything there is to know about running a small scale brewery and making Dr. Van der Poel and beer. That'd be really good for sort of helping the next generation of brewers, perhaps. Uh, yeah. You're interested, what would be your top advice for a young brewer just starting out, just like you did, doing it at home and working your way? I guess that's the usual path, although there are more and more professional At the brewers. moment, uh, yeah. wait. Wait until the market is stabilized. At, at this moment, it's very uncertain. In some countries, uh, like in, like in the Netherlands, you have like 700 or more breweries. That's, that's too much. And I think a lot of those small breweries and beer firms will disappear in the near future. And then after that's happened, there might be some room again for new ideas, new blood. But at the moment, it's, it's, it's very difficult. Do you think any young guy or girl brewing right now will listen to that advice? No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Oh, you've got it in your right. You're only young once, just like yourself. But then you were 
opening up new markets. Uh, you, you were yeah. seeing the, this is the oh. beer I want a beer and I want to brew it and there will be some people who love it and a very special crowd. I hope so. But the moment is, it's, it's not as easy as, as many people think. And, uh, but it probably will go better in a couple of years. Well, sign us up to the club. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you so let's much. Go, let's go up. And, yeah. uh, Thank you for your time.